Hi everybody, this is Stacy Black, Bossier Parish Community College. We are on open campus, we are doing 099. We are now in module five, which talks about exponents that are negative. So we're gonna take a look at the class notes first. As we go up to the board, let's look at this example. We have 3 to the negative 1. Again, you cannot write this base negative 1 times. So in algebra, we talk about there is no such thing as a negative exponent. What you have to do is a magic trick. You have to make this exponent always positive. And the way you do that, the rule is you do the reciprocal of this base. And if you remember, reciprocal means to flip a fraction. So this number 3 is really 3 over 1. So to make this exponent positive, we do the reciprocal of the base, we flip 3 over 1, we get 1 third, and now our exponent is positive. And we understand what that means. 1 third to the first power means to write that base one time. Okay. Let's try another one. If you look at your class notes, if I have one third to the negative two, again, we would look at this expression and say, okay, can't work with a negative exponent. Can't write this base negative two times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this exponent positive by doing the reciprocal. Because this is already a fraction, we're just gonna flip it. We're gonna put the denominator in the numerator spot put the numerator in the denominator spot, and now our exponent becomes a 2. And we understand that. Now, before we write this twice, we know 3 divided by 1 is 3. So following our rules, so please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we work the inside first. Now we'll do 3 squared. 3 times 3 is 9. So the moral of the story is you can never have a negative exponent. To make an exponent positive, you do the reciprocal of the base. So if you look at your class notes in example 9 and 10, they look the same, 2x to the negative 2, 2x to the negative 2. But they're not the same. This expression has parentheses. This one does not. So again, we have to understand. I have a negative exponent. It doesn't make sense. So who owns that negative exponent? Well, it belongs to both the 2 and the x because they are connected by multiplication and they're in the parentheses. So we're going to flip all of this. To make all this a fraction, we put it over 1. So now we'll do our reciprocal. That would become 1 over 2x. And now the exponent's squared. What does squaring mean? It means to take this and multiply it twice. So we can write 1 over 2x times 1 over 2x. And we all understand how to multiply fractions. We do top times top, bottom times bottom. So 1 times 1 is 1. The coefficients 2 times 2 are 4. And x times x is always x squared. Now if you come over here to expression 10, even though it looks the same, it's not. We have the negative exponent, which means we have to change that exponent to be positive. But this exponent only belongs to the x. It doesn't belong to the 2 because we do not have parentheses. So again, 
We're not going to do anything with the 2. The 2 is going to stay. We're going to flip x. x as a fraction is x over 1. So to do the reciprocal would be 1 over x. And now that exponent is squared. Again, we know our order of operations. We cannot multiply first till we square. Squaring means to write it twice. Once we write it twice, it's connected by multiplication. We can make the whole number to a fraction, and now we're multiplying fractions. Top times top, bottom times bottom. So if you look, by having the parentheses makes a difference in the value of the expression. Let's try one more example. So let's go back to our notes. and look inside and see, oh my, we have a problem. There is a negative exponent here. So that negative 3 exponent only belongs to base y. So the only thing that's going to have to flip is base y. Because this is already written as a fraction, there's a fraction bar, all you have to do is move its location. That's all doing the reciprocal means, is moving location. If something's in the numerator, it would come down to the denominator. If something's in the denominator, it would go back to the numerator. So all we're going to do is move this y to the numerator, and now we'll have a positive exponent. Everything else we're going to copy. We're going to leave the negative 4, x to the fifth, y, and now bring up the y cubed. Leave in the denominator the x to the seventh, and leave that negative exponent. You can only deal with one negative exponent at a time. So we're working on the inside first. Well, now if you look, we have many rules up here. We have learned in previous modules that two variables side by side are connected by multiplication. And when you multiply variables, you add their exponents. There's an invisible 1 there, and there's a 3 here. So that would make y to the 4th. So now our expression would be negative 4, x to the 5th, y to the 4th, over x to the 7th, all to the negative 2. But I'm not wor done working on the inside. I also have x's, and they are connected by the division bar. So we've already learned, when you divide variables, you subtract exponents. We've already discussed this. When you're subtracting 5 and 7, which would be 2, you put that x squared, that x with the 2 exponent, where there were more x's. So if you take these 5 away, they're gone. You take 5 from 7, and you're left with 2. So now we have... In the numerator, negative 4, a y to the 4th. In the denominator, we have an x squared. But it's still to the negative 2 exponent. So we're not done. There's nothing else we can do inside. We've done everything inside we possibly can do. So now we have to deal with this negative exponent. Because of the parentheses, it belongs to everybody. So that means this whole expression is going to flip. We're going to do the reciprocal. Which means the x squared is going to go to the numerator. And the negative 4y to the 4th goes to the denominator. Remember, all doing a reciprocal does is make the exponent positive. It doesn't change the value of the other numbers. So this negative 4 is going to stay in negative 4. Okay, this was the exponent. Now it's positive. Now we've learned. What does squaring mean to do? It means to write it twice. And once we write it twice, we're multiplying fractions. And we've sung since last week, top times top. When we multiply, we had exponents. And bottom times bottom. 4, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. y to the 4th times y to the 4th is y to the 8th. If you'd like to do that in your head, you could. You could use our little shortcut last week called the power rule, which says two exponents side by side are connected by multiplication. 
2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2, those are both exponents. 4 times 2 is 8. What you got to be careful of with the power rule is not forgetting this coefficient. You still have to take this number and square it, which means multiply it not by 2, but by itself. And negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. There's nothing else we can do here because these are different variables. So that is our final answer. So again, what we learned today is that you do not work with negative exponents. You make them positive first by doing the reciprocal flipping the base they're connected to. Once your exponents are positive, then you're just using the rules we've learned in the previous four modules. Hope that helps. Have a great day. Thank you.